This video came to be because I asked myself last fall if these tomato seeds were too rotten to germinate. Now it's springtime and we're going to find out today on this side of the firmament. The seeds I'll be highlighting came from my own garden in 2021. I scooped the guts of each kind of tomato out and into a small bowl where I then let it all rot down into an evaporated mold layer. No one else online suggests doing this, in fact, I thought for sure I'd wrecked them. I had to fill the container with water and soften it all, then scrape the seeds off of the bottom of the plastic, jet spray it so that it all filtered out through this drainer, and then I highly pressure wash them to try to remove any residual mold spores that might further wreck the seeds. My super duper official way of separating and keeping the seeds was to spread the wet seeds onto a labeled paper towel and let them thoroughly air dry. Remember, this footage is from fall of 2021. I had no clue if these would work or not. I was trying to capture the variety of colors these Japanese trifle seeds became after such a long fermentation. Yikes. I hope they're still viable. My plan is to start out with individual germination dome chambers for each type of tomato. I'm using a 2 liter bottle that I'm cutting in half most of the way around, leaving a small portion attached to create a sort of hinge. Oh, and I heated a screwdriver with a flame and then melted holes in the bottom of the bottle for drainage. Now I'm filling the bottles with a mix of soils, some sand, some potting mix, some dirt from my land, all pre-moistened so it's evenly damp without dry pockets. Now here we are back to my super official way of storing seeds. Remember those labeled paper towels the seeds air dried on? I just folded each one up and stacked them in these little containers for the winter. Professional. I had a few other containers sitting around, so I experimented with the best germination chamber. I put down quite a few seeds of each type because I wasn't sure how well my success rate would be. Beware. If you follow my way, you might end up with hundreds of tomatoes. Spoiler alert. These are Tommy Toe tomatoes. They are a cherry tomato that will produce hundreds of tasty, sweet fruit. I don't even like fresh tomatoes, but I can't deny these little things are so sweet and juicy on the inside, you can almost trick yourself into thinking they're not a tomato. And they're also really delicious when they're dehydrated. They become kind of a fruit candy flavored thing. And you can, again, trick yourself into thinking they're not a tomato. <laughs> Next is San Marzano tomatoes. These are a paste tomato that I like for making into sauce, which is the main way I use tomatoes. They're easy to de-seed and prep for the canning process. Try and remember to pay attention to what I have to say later on about using these types of containers. Hint, hint. The two liter bottles worked much better. Yay, now we're doing persimmon tomatoes. These beautiful yellow slash orange tomatoes are big and a sight to see. They have minimal seeds goo on the inside with a lot of sturdy flesh that's great for tomato sandwiches if you like those, and it's also a good tomato still for sauces. We're back to the Japanese trifle seeds that we started this video with. Again, these seeds had fuzzy white mold growing on them. All of these varieties had become just as rotten while I was fermenting the seeds. Japanese trifled tomatoes are two-toned, crack-resistant, and potato-leafed. That's right. The leaves look different than your regular tomato plant. They worked good in my sauce last year, and they're unique-looking, so why not grow them? Since we're on the topic of unique-looking, now we're doing Scary Larry's. Yeah. Scary Larry Tomatoes. <laughs> the nice guy I bought them from originally had to convince me too. Best he could explain them is they're a paste tomato that get kind of ugly looking and weird. And it's true, they get kind of scarred and grow in all kind of funky shapes. From what I can tell, they're an heirloom variety originally from my area in Idaho, so that's pretty cool. 
when you cut into them, they're a totally different experience on the inside from any other tomato I've seen. So it's definitely worth growing. Roma tomatoes are next. Just your simple run-of-the-mill paste tomato. Easy to process for sauce. Oxheart tomatoes. I have to admit they weren't my favorite because I'm not a fresh tomato eater. Also, my oxheart plant was not very prolific, so I didn't see it perform impressively. I'll bet I didn't prune it. Yeah, I didn't prune it at all. Hopefully the one good fruit I got will give me some good seeds to go for round two. They are named based on their shape, resembling a heart. They're considered a slicer tomato, and there was meat on the inside, sure, it's just that it seemed grainy. I think it's the same kind of tomato you get on a burger. It's just not my preference for a tomato. I'm pretty sure these last seeds are a pink or red brandy wine tomato. This is also a potato leaf variety, just like the Japanese trifle. It's considered a huge heirloom known for large fruits, although mine didn't really perform great last year, so let's pray for a better season in 2022 for this variety. As you may have noticed, I did not press the seeds into the soil at all. I've learned that I personally tend to sow seeds too deep, so to avoid that I'm just sprinkling a small layer of soil on top of the seeds, just enough to cover most of them. Some are still visible, but that's okay because too deep equals no sprout, but too shallow still usually results in a sprout. I'm going to spray it with this spray bottle because I find that sometimes when I water stuff it buries the seeds deeper by splashing the soil around. The spray bottle avoids that entirely. Cover it up with a little duct tape to create a tight seal. The next thing you'll do is label them so you have a clue what's growing in this container here. And then I also like to put the date so I have an idea if it's germinating slow or if maybe it's been too long and I've lost the seeds altogether. I have to repeat this process for all of the tomatoes that I sowed on this video. This is my Roma tomatoes. I'm just going to do the same process, label it, and we'll be moving on to the next step. It's important to remember that I pre-moistened the soil that I sowed these seeds into. If this was perfectly dry soil, the spray bottle would not provide enough moisture for this system. Make sure that you pre-moisten everything so it's evenly moist without being saturated. Then you can get away with the spray bottle. To finalize my germination domes, I am closing the system with a cap. This will create a humid and warm, stable environment for the seeds to wake up in. Now it's March 7th, about 11 days since I sowed these seeds. The closed, shallow containers are doing the best. Look at how many Roma and Persimmon sprouts are coming up. The water droplets on the lid show you just how much humidity built up in these containers. I didn't water these one little drop over the last 11 days. Okay, okay, these are looking a little leggy, but that's alright. We're going to repot them today. I'm seeing some life in the 2 liter bottles as well. Not the same amount of water droplets that are built up as we saw in the shallow containers, but still life. And that's awesome. Some of these varieties are ones I didn't cover in the beginning part of this video because they're just new seeds from seeds, a seed packet. I don't really have any experience with them. But um, yeah, you're seeing some from the old fermented moldy seeds and some from regular seed packets and I'm really not seeing a huge difference in germination rates. They all look pretty dang good. Back to these strawberry containers. These had vent holes in the lids and on the sides. I experimented with them but found there's no humidity to trick the seeds into waking up. I redampened the soil and then covered them in plastic wrap but I actually suggest putting them in gallon sized bags. That works the best in the long run. With my trusty chopsticks, I'm going to dig down to make a hole in my soil pot. 
Tomato plants will grow roots from the entire stem, so to fix your leggy tomato seedlings, you just bury the stem in soil. It's going to sort the rest out later. Press the soil around the stem. Air pockets are bad. You want to give the stem all the stability of the soil. Now it's finding a warm, sunny spot to place them while they grow. I've decided this camper van of mine isn't getting any attention in the off season, so it has become the greenhouse. I put this thermometer in there so I know how hot or cold it gets. I think you could do this with your car, even if you have to drive it to work every day and park it in a sunny spot, so do what you gotta do. It still gets below 50 degrees at night, so for the time being, these are taken to the Winnebago during the day and then brought back inside for nighttime. Now this is about a week or so later, more seeds germinated and graduated to a soil pot. We're now talking hundreds of tomatoes. <laughs> Yeesh. Yes, some die after transplant. My advice is to quickly replace it with another sprout. Empty holes or dead plants are just depressing to look at. The good news is that finally the Japanese trifle seeds have sprouted. They didn't get wrecked by the mold! Hooray! But as you can see in this photo, there is a bag around them now which has created the humidity dome we knew the tomato seeds liked the best. On the topic of humidity, my pro tip is that when you remove the seedlings from their germination domes, they're used to having water in the air. So when you transplant them to an open air pot, you need to water the soil, yes, but you also need to mist the seedlings with water so they can absorb moisture through their leaves and stem, more how they were used to getting hydration in the humidity dome. I find that this creates a stronger plant that has a shorter period of adjusting to a almost hardening off type process. The goal here is to harden these off every step of the way so that I don't ultimately kill them in another month when they're nice big plants but too used to being in the home and then I forget them outside or something. Since we're on the topic of forgetting tomatoes outside, <laughs> a beautiful tray of persimmon tomatoes were left outside on a night it got below freezing. I kept wondering why it seemed like I was missing a tray. I fared with 12 that lived through the cold night. Talk about cold hardy. Maybe leave yourself a note if you set a tray in a different place than you usually set them. <laughs> On top of the mass fatalities in this tray, a tray also slid off the top of the dryer one night while it was going through a spinning cycle. Maybe make sure you don't make that same mistake. But now today it's March 20th. It's been less than a month since starting these seeds and I'm happy to have quite a few sprouting true leaves and growing strong stalks. Success! If you ever ferment your seeds for a super long time where they become moldy and evaporated down to just a gross little stuck wad, don't worry because God has made it to where they will still grow. If you remember anything from this video, it's when life gets rotten, don't give up. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. God bless you. Bye.